What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and another video. We are back once again with my GT350 and today we're not dealing with any issues. This is an exciting video for me because we're actually actually going to be adding a modification to this car and that mod is going to be a downshift blip module by X and Earring. So the first thing I'm going to answer is no, it's not something that's going to void the warranty on the car. I have not done anything to my GT350 at this point that would in fact void the warranty on this car because I want to keep that power chain warranty intact based on the issues that I have had. So anyways, I want to kind of quickly mention what the module itself does for this car. So it basically is going to aid in heel toe downshifting so that you don't have to do that. And if you track your car at all, it's something that you're going to want to have. Now, I will mention that you can heel toe downshift. That's not an issue, but for me going out to Sebring, which I already have with this car, with the downshift flip module and compared it to heel toe downshifting for me, even though I'm not, not the most experienced heel toe downshifter, I can do it. But the extra confidence you get from having a module like this is just something that you can't put enough value on in my opinion, when you're braking at 140 plus miles per hour or just anywhere over hundred plus and you're firm on that brake, and then you have to roll your foot over to blip the throttle that little bit of brake pressure release, and that's something that you get better at over time, but it's, a, it's an acquired skill heel toe downshifting. So that little release in brake pressure reduces my confidence personally. So I'm not where I needed to be at personally to master that skill set, but this completely changes the game in that regard because you don't have to learn that skill at all. And it puts you in a position where you can go out on the track and really enjoy yourself and not have to worry about something like that. And I can assure you when you are going out to a track and you have not been out there before, it's something that you're going to want to have. And I've been out to a few track days now and I can tell you it's very, very at the top of my list on recommendations for a modification that you have to have for track stuff besides like brake fluid and pet track pads. So. Um, getting in this, into this a little bit further, essentially what it's going to do is the unit, when you're pressing down on the brake, instead of having to blip the throttle with your brake foot and roll it over to hit the gas, you, when you clutch in and you're on the brake, the throttle will automatically blip for you. So that's essentially what the unit's going to do. Now, it won't blip again unless you release that clutch and then push it back in, which is perfect. So if you go from four down to three, it'll blip. And then when you really push the clutch back in, it resets and you can hit it again and it'll blip for that two downshift. Hope that made sense. But today we're gonna be installing this unit. Uh, I'm gonna show you a quick demonstration with the unit. Brake, clutch. And I'm also gonna mention to you guys real quick, which I'll show you in the car real quick, some of the benefits of this unit because I was actually looking at another company setup beforehand and I had reached out to them, they actually didn't respond to me, but the other unit on the market has consistency issues from what I found and talked to people specifically that have been on track with that unit and it wasn't actually blipping the throttle when they needed to. Now that's a big problem for me. So there's no way I was spending 400 plus bucks on something that wasn't going to work. So essentially what you're doing with the other unit is you're tapping into your drive-by wire and that is a very, very sensitive place to tap into. And that wire is extremely, extremely small. I think it's like 24 gauge, which is crazy. So. Um, being that it's already very finicky and that wire is that small, that's not something I really wanted to tap into. And it makes sense uh, based on talking to Max over at X and Earring what you know, the issue with that unit might be. He was totally candid about you know, answering all my questions. And I was really lucky because they're actually like 30 minutes away from me. I was able to go pick up the unit from them. And he was super cool and helping me out with a bunch of questions that I had. So we made it over here to X and Earring. Wasn't a far drive, got Max here. Happened. We've been chatting and super awesome dude. I told you guys we got to talk on the phone for like 30 minutes uh, a couple months ago before my engine blew up on yeah, the car. All that. Yeah, <laughs> so it took me a while to get out here, but glad I finally made it. This is the inside of their shop. Really sick building here. And he actually helped me out with my magnetic ride on this car too, which I'll save for another video. So I owe him a huge shout out for everything there. But what I wanted to mention with that was, is everything is plug and play with this unit as far as the pedals go. So you tap into your gas pedal, there is, I'm gonna put an overlay when I was out at Max's, he showed me a pedal assembly out of the car. He actually has the OEM connector where you can just plug straight onto that, which is awesome. You're not tapping into that wire, which solves 
that issue. All right, so I wanted to show you guys one other thing real quick. Max actually grabbed a gas pedal here to show an example of what we're talking about. But for the throttle connection, I thought this was really interesting when I talked to him on the phone. Um, I'll let you kind of take over here what we're talking about, but. Yeah, so this is our, this is our inline drive-by-wire, you know, blip harness. Yep. And unlike any other blip products that are out there, we don't make you tap the five volt sensor lines. Yep. So when you look under there, you'll find this connector from your engine harness, and that's the factory connector. Well, to make an inline harness, this connector doesn't exist. So we were able to source those and have them designed to emulate the pedal. So you actually had this connector designed to fit that perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yep, so when you go to install our blip harness side, you plug right onto the pedal, and then you plug this in to your engine side harness, to emulate the pedal so completely plug and play just yep. like on the clutch switch which we have right here this mm -hmm. connection so completely plug and play on that end as well so that makes installation for something like this a lot easier now for the clutch you just plug and play on that as well very very simple that wire is very tough to get to so if you don't have small hands like me uh you're gonna want some help there but for me it was not a big deal i'll try and aid in the, the installation on how to do that but it's very very simple if you have if you know what you're doing it's just a little bit tough to get to but other than that all you have to do is tap into any 12 volt source and then on one of the bcm connectors which i'll show uh just tap into the brake light circuit and then you're good to go so very straightforward one more thing you have to also put a switch in you are not required to do this but uh i would highly recommend it because you're going to want to be able to turn this on and off unless the car is just a dedicated track car you still would want to switch because you don't want to be running this through the pits and stuff like that it's not something you're just going to want to drive around with you want to be able to turn it on and off so if you are doing spirited driving like canyon roads or back roads this is another kind of use for it where you're really hard on the brake and it'll do the heel toe downshifting technique for you so yes you can use it in those situations but you are going to be having having to drive very aggressively so um other than that uh, i did wire the switch to the center console which i'll show you in a moment once i kind of go through everything but i just put that in the center console for power and that's it all right guys so to start i just laid out my whole wiring setup here now i did record this video already i don't know if i mentioned that but i had to remove the unit because of the i just wanted to take it out since i had to take the car to ford so i just pulled everything out it literally took me like five minutes to pull this thing out um so now everything's already wired together the first thing you would have to do is just wire everything by either putting crimp connectors or soldering the wires which is what we did so uh, just showing you the layout here overall we have the unit which will go in the glove box I'm more of a visual guy so the instructions are very straightforward but again I just wanted to make this as straightforward for you guys as possible so you would just connect the main connection point here and that'll sit in the glove box and from there we've got a few other points coming off of here so the first one that we'll talk about is this brown wire right here there's gonna be four total so the brown one, I actually have two brown because I actually chopped off some extra wire and used that for another, another line and soldered that in. But just the main brown line that comes out of that is what's gonna go to your brake light circuit. So what you're gonna do is put a male connection on there, an 18 to 22 gauge male connection on there. So it's gonna be a T-tap. And I'll show you what the other end of that looks like, but you're gonna use a T-tap to tap into that brake circuit. And then you're gonna just plug this into that. Very straightforward. The second one, this is brown too, but it's not really brown. It's actually orange, as you can see here. That is your power. So what we're gonna do is the same thing we did for the brake, and we are going to add a male connector there, and we're gonna use a T-tap to tap into the 12 volt source. You don't have to tap into the 12 volt source there. You could do it over by the cigarette lighter if you want. I thought about it afterwards just because I was not in think mode. I was just in like this do mode to get things done, and I just wired that all the way there. So. Um, if anybody's wondering, that's why I did it that way. So orange is going to be for power and that's going to be power in. So that's going to be power into the switch that we're running. So that first wire is going to run all the way to our center console here. And that's going to go to power in, which is one of these red wires over here. And that's going to go, these three wires are going to go to our switch. So these are female connectors here. The switch has three male connectors, which I'll show you once we're in the car. So from there, there's going to be power out, which is going to go, it's going to be the other red wire. And that is going to go back to the unit right here. 
you're gonna have some connections that you're gonna have to make. You can see some of these different solder points with the heat shrink that we added. Now you can use crimp connectors if you want. I prefer soldering because especially with a vehicle like this on track, I wanna make sure those connections are as secure as possible. So I would recommend the same thing for you. Uh, and then the last one on the switch here is just a ground if you have a switch. So you just would put that to any, uh, any ground that you can find that's suitable, that works. And then from there, I'm gonna run the clutch line, which is the yellow one, and then the ground line over and through the, the console, which I'll show you. And then we're just gonna plug and play right there to the clutch connection. And that's it. Um, the last thing, or sorry, I just gave you the wrong connector. This is the yellow and black, which is for the clutch. This is gonna be going into the gas pedal, plug and play. So you just unplug it, plug one end in here, plug the other end in there, and then you're good. So that is literally the whole install for this. The longest part for me initially was the fact that I didn't have wire cutters. So make sure you have a good set of wire cutters. I was using Harbor Freight wire cutters. I actually had to stop because I couldn't strip the wiring on this. The, the wiring that Max sends out from Exineering with this setup is very good wiring and you want that durability with any type of electrical stuff. So I appreciate him doing that, but um, I had really crappy tools for this. So I, whenever that happens, I just stop and I don't try and force anything and jerry rig it. So I wanted those connections to be perfect. So the last thing I'm gonna mention before we jump in and install this is there is software for this unit. If you wanna use it, I would, I would recommend it. You have, uh, it's Windows based or Android based. So there's an Android app or you can use a Windows laptop and bring that in your car, which is what I did. And from that point, you can basically make adjustments on how you want this unit to perform when it's in the car. So the blip percentage, uh, how much the clutch is depressed, the delay, and it's really, really a nice feature to have if you wanna fine tune that out there on the track. It only took me a session or two to get where I wanted it. I think I ended up at 40% on the blip, if I'm remembering correctly. But out of the box, it's, box, it's 50, which is, is gonna be fine for some people as well. So you technically could just take it out and put it in and install it and you'd be good to go and you probably would never have to tinker with it. But again, that's for the fine tuning adjustments. But um, now I'm just gonna go ahead and set everything up and wire it in. All right, so I'm gonna quickly walk you guys through this. The first thing we're gonna do is pop the panels off the center console on each side. They're literally just clipped in and I'm not gonna try and scratch up all my plastics. Do that on both sides. So I got the other one right here. And then we're just gonna remove two seven millimeter bolts here from each side. That's gonna release the center console so you can just pull that out. Next, there's just a bunch of plastic clips holding the center console in place that you literally just pull up it's not as easy as it just looked, but I've had mine out probably three or four times already, so the clips might be a little bit easier to get out. You might need a plastic trim tool to start it if you don't have the uh, finger power to pop it off, but first get the lid open, pull up with your hands. If not, use a plastic trim tool and be careful not to gouge up your plastics. And then from there, you can just pull up on the rest of the clips. Make sure you're doing it evenly so you don't break any plastic clips. So you heard the last two come out there, no problem. And then lastly, we have the shifter bezel trim. You don't wanna take that off beforehand. That's how you'll break your clips. If you wait, pull your e-brake up a little bit, gain some access by removing the electrical connection underneath here. Then you have access to all the clips that are underneath here that you can squeeze together by hand or with pliers. I've always been able to get it out by hand and um, from there you can just pull that bezel, bezel trim out. All right, so now that that is disconnected, all we have to do is just lift up and away and the center console is out of the car. You can literally have this out in less than five minutes. It's that, that easy. And next, if you're gonna be wiring a switch to the center console like me and using this little panel that I'll show you in a moment, there's gonna be four electrical, electrical connectors that you're gonna wanna disconnect and they come out pretty easily here and that's all four and then there's a couple of tabs one on each side holding that plate in place and that's got your usb and the uh cigarette adapter in there okay and that literally comes out like that and then from there we're just going to pop out the cigarette adapter i already had mine out once the first time it was a lot uh tougher to get out but now we have a little spot where we can put the switch. And for the switch, I went ahead and picked one up, I think from AutoZone or Advance. It was just a 12 volt switch. I'm probably gonna get one that fits a little bit nicer just cause I'm a little bit OCD about this stuff. It fits in there okay. I put electrical tape on it to hold it in there better, but you can see this little gap, which you won't really notice when it's in the car, but 
For me, I just want it to be as OEM looking as possible. So what I'll probably do is find a round switch that fits this, this gap perfectly. Um, but on the back side, you can see we have the male connectors that we'll be connecting the power and the ground to. Starting the install, we're gonna pop the glove box open. We have two points right here that will release the glove box. And then we have one connection point right here that we can undo by pushing up and pulling out. And that'll get that little arm disconnected. And we're good there. So from that point, we're gonna start our routing with the main harness clip. So what I'm gonna do is start everything, get this all in the car first. From there, we're gonna run the main harness underneath from the bottom and then through this little opening right here. And then there's a little slit that you can just kind of gain access to the box by doing that. And then I might as well, while we're here, just plug in the unit. Not that it's necessary right now, but just plug that in and connect it. You can wait till the end if you want to do that too. You're just going to want to make sure when you uh, set this back up to go in that uh, your connection points back here are kind of out of the way, which we're good. Yep. And then we'll just reconnect this arm as well. And that bar is just over with, so. All right, so next we're gonna run the throttle connection and the clutch pedal connection just underneath and through the console area. So you're literally just gonna be snaking that through. Uh, what I did last time was just one at a time and then I zip tied the other setup to the first one and then pulled it through because there's a lot of stuff kind of blocking you back there. But uh, this time I might just try and Push it through. Just a tip for getting that wire through, just so you don't have to think about it. Uh, the best way is to start on the one end and put your hand through this end as much as you can. Again, small hands will be helpful here. And then from that point, stick your hand through here on this side and you probably can reach in and grab it. Is what I did for the first wire. Just trying to find the opening. And I got it. So just like that. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is run the two power lines. It's actually one, but because we have a switch, we're routing it back. Again, you wouldn't be routing it back if you were wiring the switch to a 12 volt source over here. Like I was mentioning, you could tap into this right here, which is the cigarette lighter or the uh, cigarette, yeah, the 12 volt source here. So that's another option versus wiring it all the way back. I had just already done this and I'm just not gonna change it now. So just for reference, I'm gonna show you still where I tapped into uh, just to make it easier for you guys if that's what you wanna do. But uh, we're just gonna run the wiring through here. Again, the console's already out, easy access. You can pull this all back and I'm gonna clean this up really nice. You'll never see any of this stuff. And again, I'm a little bit OCD, so I might go back and do some wire loom once this is permanently set up in here, just so there's not, you know, multicolored wiring showing, even if you stuck your head underneath. I'm just a little bit crazy sometimes. So anyways, we'll get all the slack cleaned up here for that. And then the last thing is really just the brake circuit and the 12 volt source. Again, they look the same because I tapped or I soldered in some more brown wire, but this one right here with the orange is the power. And then the other brown wire is going to be the brake light circuit. So don't get confused by my colors just because I tapped in or I soldered in that extra wiring. So moving on to the clutch connection, I'm going to make this very simple for you guys because it's not uh, the easiest thing in the world to get to. But if you know what you're doing, it's not bad. It's, it's really high up about probably about this height in the dash and it's upside down. So it's harder to get off. So it's going to be identical to this connection right here and it sits in this exact same format. So the flat side is gonna be inward toward the center console, and then you have this little prong right here that you can push in with your thumb, and then you're able to pull it up and out. I already disconnected it very, very quick if you know what you're doing. So you're only gonna be able to fit one hand up there like I mentioned. By noting this orientation, it's gonna be a lot easier to get this back into the car. So it will literally take you, you know, maybe, it'll take me less than a minute, but probably take you around five minutes since it'll be your first time. I, the first time it took me about that. So just note, this is how it goes in 
and it'll make it a lot easier when you're going to install that. All right, so next you're just gonna disconnect the connector for the throttle, which is gonna look identical to this one right here. You're gonna plug this one in and then attach this end to the end that you removed. I also forgot to mention, just throwing it out there, you have to connect the other end to the clutch switch as well that I was talking about before, I just didn't mention it. So, um, and that pretty much tidies up this side, and then you wanna zip tie all those lines up and out of the way. You're gonna wanna run them in front of the pedals, not behind them, obviously, because if you hit the clutch in and the, the line is behind it, it's gonna put pressure on that wire. So make sure it's in front and you zip tie everything nice and tight uh, up behind here. So moving on to the BCM connector, which is hidden behind the little kick panel over here. We're going to remove a couple of trim pieces. Literally just pop off. I have to get this guy off. I'll have to put you down for this one likely so I can get even pressure here, but this just pulls out. Just be careful because you want to put even pressure on that. All right, so got that one off and now we are going to go ahead and remove this guy right here. There's just two clips holding it in right here. So you can just pull outward on that. And then you also have the little cover attached in the back here, which you can just pull straight out on and that'll leave it connected to this end right here. So it comes out as one piece. So as you can see, I said straight out because that clip is just just one clip right there. So now that we're down here underneath, I just wanted to show you which connector that we are tapping into. It's gonna be this guy right here in the top right. And then we're gonna do the purple and white wire is gonna be for the brake. And then if you wanna do power here, you would just tap into the blue gray, which is right here as well. You can see I kinda already had tapped those before, so I'm just gonna reattach my T-taps on there and we will be good to go. You don't have to do the uh, 12 volt source here if you don't want to. Just showing you where I have mine set up for now. So this is what it should look like after you are all finished with the T-taps installed. You're gonna want to, uh, when you have the T-taps on there, just make sure you secure it with a set of pliers to make sure it seats fully and you have a good solid connection on each of those wires. And all we have to do now is just reconnect the BCM connector. And we are good there. All right, so lastly, I went ahead and started connecting the switch and the ground. For the ground, I'd recommend getting a little eyelet attachment for that. I just have the open wire kind of grounded to that point. Um, for the switch, I'll show you how we have that set up before I attach everything here. So this is just gonna be an LED switch. So we have power coming in to the unit from the bottom wire right here. And then we have power going out via the other red wire right there, which is the middle wire. So that's going to the actual blip box itself. The other one is coming from the 12 volt source. So the bottom one, which has got the blue connector right here, is going, coming in from the 12 volt source, then back out to the blip box via that little red connection, which is the red wire as well. And then lastly, that ground is on the top. So I'm just showing you guys how I set mine up. From here, we can just pop this in and then I put a little electrical tape on here to hold it in place since the switch didn't fit perfectly. I might actually have to add a little bit more to there, but as I mentioned earlier, I think I'm gonna get a better fitting switch anyway. Just added uh, some more electrical tape to that to make this fit better in the meantime until I get another switch. And it fits in there nice and snug. You just have that little tiny opening there. Then you just have on off. So it's obviously not powering on right now because I have the car turned off. And I forgot to plug these connections back in first for the USB beforehand. That's always easier. And I also forgot to mention, I just, where the electrical outlet was before, sorry, the um, 12 volt source before, I just taped that connector up and out of the way. All right, so since we're all finished up, all we have to do is reinstall the center console and all the other panels. I will mention if you want to test your unit, uh, and make sure all the wiring is good. You will have to reconnect your center console, otherwise it's not gonna rec recognize your key when you go to press the start button. So just a little note there. I know mine's gonna work, so I'm not really stressing over that, so I'm just gonna reinstall everything back into the car. But again, you might wanna test that first if you're doing any new soldering or any connections that you're just not 100% sure of. All right guys, so I went ahead and finished up the install just by putting all the plastics back in place and then I zip tied everything and, and cut those zip ties as well. So really hard to show that stuff and it's really not necessary. You guys can figure that all out. But um, 
anyways pretty simple as you guys could tell um you're probably going to spend more time actually doing the soldering and just doing the crimping of the wires than anything but this portion that i showed you now that you have it laid out should be pretty quick for you as well now we're going to go ahead and test everything um all we're going to do is just cycle the car to accessory mode power on and then i went ahead and flipped the unit upside down here so you could see the led set up on here and the led set up here so we're going to start by flicking this switch on right here this is the final look it actually comes out pretty clean even with that switch there's just that tiny little gap that you can see so led on led on here and now we're going to go ahead and test this setup and i'm going to show you what happens here so i'm actually going to be on the brake right now nothing happens but when i hit the clutch you can see right there the other led lights up and i'm still on the brake in the clutch right now so once i release the clutch nothing happens but i'm going to go ahead and clutch back in and you can see it went ahead and lit up again and that is the blip it's basically simulating what the blip is going to do so if the car was on it would actually blip the throttle i'm going to show you guys all that stuff as well but this is just as a checkpoint to see if everything's working so you can also do it in reverse but really that's what you're going to be doing on track is brake and then clutch but if you clutch in and then hit the brake like i just did it's going to do the same exact thing all right guys so i just showed you how to test the unit i'm going to show you it actually in action right now driving on the road and also just here park just to show you being on the brake right now clutch in release clutch we got that blip so we're on brake clutch in we get that blip so that's essentially what this unit is doing for you and i'll show you another foot view right here ashley's got the camera so we're on brake clutch so that's a double right there and would be a set uh a situation where you'd be going from five to four four to three or four to three and then three to two so that's where you would kind of have a double blip but you have to release one or the other in order for it to blip again so it blips but it's not going to blip again until i fully release the clutch or the brake so i release the clutch back in again and we get another blip so i'll show you it in action downshifting and we'll go from there all right guys so i actually have it on right now because i'm trying to train myself a little bit um more so through the pits to not double tap on the brake because if you release the brake with the clutch in that's just a tendency i have from street driving it's going to blip one time right there when i hit the brake so when i was initially testing this the first time a few weeks ago before sebring i accidentally would release the brake because i heard the car the engine blip and in just a reaction release the brake hit the brake again it would double blip so um kind of just a stupid little notation there but it might be something that somebody else sees uh when they install the unit so it's not something you're typically going to just be driving around on the street with all the time but again if you are doing spirited driving uh you could you could actually use this feature uh but especially for track driving this is where it really has such a huge benefit so again when i come into brake here it's going to give that blip i just have to be aware of that stay on the brake don't don't um don't modulate the pressure too much on that to fully release it so it doesn't double blip
think I'm still gonna adjust my um, blip down a little bit. I think I'm at 40% right now. I may go down a little bit lower and I shift pretty quickly. So if the revs are a little bit higher, again, it's not gonna match. So it's something that you can tinker with based on your driving style. I'll show you the software in my next video that I'm gonna come out with this unit, but um, you know, I'll put up some track footage showing you guys how this works as well. But other than that, I just wanted to mention, you know, it is a substantial improvement, you know, for on track use, like a very, very substantial um, increase in confidence going into these braking zones, which I think I mentioned earlier. And it really applies to those guys that are not, you know, really seasoned at heel toe downshifting, which really includes myself because it's different heel towing on the street than it is on the track. And while I mentioned I could do it, um, it takes away that learning process and allows you to focus on what you really need to be focusing on, especially just starting to get into, you know, the track scene. And I, you know, knew the line of Sebring really well from, you know, playing Forza, ironically, and that's something I recommend for people to do before going out to a track is kind of studying some videos online and things like that. But you want to be as comfortable as possible while you're out on the track. So um, this is something that helps you do that and makes you more confident. So I have to recommend it for really anybody doing track uh, type of stuff. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I'll have some more stuff with the software on this and uh, kind of a, just a more cinematic video as well with everything going on with the system that I wanna put together just because I think more people need to know about this unit. And uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below and I will see you guys in the next one.